As you may have heard, I put together a song for this. Um, maybe you've seen before that I, I did a rap track in uh, San Francisco last year at a Bitcoin meetup. I wanted to prove, even though that we were talking about like Tenement, Keep a Steak, and all this stuff, that we were still cool. So um, I did a song about like how great Bitcoin was, and then launched into you know how great Tenement is. So um, I didn't really concentrate that much on putting together like a rock solid presentation. So sometimes I just put up a title screen and then talk for a bit and then like I'll skip to the fun part. So uh, basically what I want to tell you about um, is this problem, the problem of distributed state. And you know, this is a problem that we're all concerned with. I think every single one of us here, whether, whether we're in blockchain land or AI land or neither really, because it's a problem we have to wrestle with all the time. Whenever we're coordinating with other people, you know, there, there's some form of distributed state that we have to maintain and update and you know, keep consistent. Um, and this is something that goes you know, way back to the beginning of societies where you have like, groups of people and there's some kind of like structure to their society and there's rituals and traditions and it has to be passed on to the next generation so it has to be replicated and it has to be done so consistently. Otherwise, you know, they might get wiped out. Effectively, the ones who weren't able to replicate uh, consistently did get wiped out. So it's a really old problem and it's really important for you know, human social organizations, for organisms themselves, and um, for artificial intelligences to maintain a, a different kind of distributed state across the neurons. And so the way I like to think about it is that there's actually really close analogies between sort of the history of the evolution of distributed state in societies and the way distributed state is evolving in, um, in our computer networks. And so, kind of originally, there were like villages and city states. This was like the original configuration, right? We had you know small tribal units or small city states that were like relatively self-sufficient. Um, and similarly, we had you know early on in, in computer land, we had individual computers and individual intranets that were kind of like relatively isolated from the outside and self-sufficient. And as time went on, we moved into an era of empires. And in the empire era. It's like we're, we're in a position of somebody else's government, right? You have like Alexander the Great or some other great empire, and they come in, and there's lots of benefits to being in this, in this larger empire where you know, they build all this infrastructure for you, and they take care of you, and whatever, but you have to give up a lot of autonomy and sovereignty, and you have to pay taxes, and so on. And so in the digital world, you know, we have Jeff Bezos' empire, the, the empire known as somebody else's computer, or the cloud, right? Where most of our computational infrastructure is still stuck. And one of, the, one of the big issues with AI, I would argue, is that it's, it's really stuck today in this era of somebody else's computer, right? Most of it's running on the cloud or it's controlled by Google or Facebook or whoever. And you know, I'm really worried about this because there's a lot of people working on AI. We're making a lot of progress. And I don't think that the social structure, the social economic structure, is ready for what's coming. Um, so. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm going to be talking about. But I'll sort of, I'll sort of go quickly through, through um, the rest of the evolution here. We went from, from empires and somebody else's government to the stage of sovereign nations, where people started to rebel against these large empires and like, we're going to band together and we're going to replace your dictatorship with a democracy, right? And so we have this, these large geopolitical sovereign units like Canada and the United States and so on. But, and similarly, in, in the blockchain world, the same in the sorry in the computer network world, the same thing is, is starting to happen. We have this like digital network sovereignty, where we're replacing large centralized databases with these more democratic institutions, blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum and so on. But the issue still with these systems is that they, they kind of come apart at the seams. They're in some sense too big for their own good, right? And and you see this. We saw this play out in America with the election of uh, a notorious individual. Um, and it plays out in, in other large geopolitical jurisdictions. It's happening in Europe, where it seems that Europe is kind of falling apart because the, the region is too large to be governed by a single entity. It's too complex for there to be a single unit of hierarchical control. And it's happening similarly in, in these digital networks. I mean, Bitcoin is going to split tomorrow, like literally tomorrow, there's the hard fork that's coming. And you know, everyone is now grappling with scalability and what's coming next. So I think, and I'm not certain, but it's really the only thing I can make sense of that the next stage in the evolution is kind of a little bit of an archaic revival, back to these villages and city-states, where we're seeing this, this growing movement of uh, like a focus on locally sourced food and locally coordinated communities and eco-villages. But at the same time, we have these massive urban centers where people are more likely to identify today with their city than they are with their country, whereas you know, a few hundred years ago, it was all about which, which country you're part of. And so I think the same thing is kind of going to happen in the blockchain land, and that the way to, and as I mentioned on the panel, the way to actually scale these systems is to start.
start focusing them in their local jurisdictions. And I really feel that unless, that unless we figure out how to do this and to provide greater sovereignty at these local levels with an economic system that's not based on large-scale bank debt, we're never going to be able to achieve any kind of sustainability. And so I think there's a really, a really interesting connection, you know, not just in, in an analogous form between the evolution of computer networks and the evolution of uh, human society, but in some sense, they're, it's almost like the, the, those two streams are about to unite and they're going to enable each other. And that using technologies like internet and blockchain technology that enable you to have many blockchains that can intercommunicate and be based in local jurisdictions and sort of stitch themselves together, you'll be able to, be able to realize this vision of you know, more, more sovereign and autonomous local regions that can actually have real sustainability and real strong, robust economics, none of this too big to fail and you know, debt-based um, economic monetary units. So, cool. Um, there's a bunch of other slides that I can kind of skip through that are an uh, you know, old version. I'll, I'll mention briefly that another big problem that at sort of at an infrastructural level is this one. Byzantine fault tolerance, state machine replication, and any programming language. And, and this is what we really addressed with Tendermint, which is, you know, we need Byzantine fault tolerance, state machine replication, so that you don't have to trust everyone on the network to have a consistent state. And so we built the Tendermint consensus algorithm. It looks something like this. It's fast. You can, you can go look this up yourself later. But the other problem is that in most of these consensus systems that are out there, you're dealing with somebody else's state machine. So there are things I mentioned earlier, like Kubernetes, which uses RAP, which is a built-in key value store, and there's Apache Zookeeper, and there's Bitcoin and Ethereum, and all of them determine your state machine ahead of time. So what we've done instead is we built a socket protocol that enables you to build your state machine in any programming language you want, and Tenement will take care of replicating it. So in the same way that an Apache web server can serve a web application from any programming language, the Tenement server can serve a state machine and replicate it securely in any programming language. And of course, we're now building, we're now using this Tendermint unit um, to build a large scale, scalable cryptocurrency in the form of the Cosmos network. So if you're interested in learning more, these are some links. Um, I will now present to you a rap song. <laughs> Locally 
on shit. Such a newbie. What up, dog? Gotta give them what they want. What's that, key? Gotta build them out something. Hell yeah. And it's gotta be fault tolerant. Hey, man, what we put in place? Local coins, new system. <laughs> Universal income. Welcome that restriction. Bring up the bottom rung to provide a higher baseline. A social net without the bureaucratic wait time. Try to centralize and you'll feel the fragile stack. Crazy crypto coins and the blockchain's got your back. Never lose your wits with the wits, you just drift it. And when AI takes your income, you'll be thrifted. So I'll continue to put the nets down, put my bet down. That unless we fix this mess, AI will beat the frown. Yeah, and you don't stop. I tell you that we don't be better off if we can just get off the clock. But until then, look again, tell me what you see. AI on the loose and an unemployed slew of thieves. So let's do this right together. This is cryptocurrencies. I know we can all look better like this. That and this. It's like that and like this and like that and that. It's like this. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> like